Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in today's video we're going to be having a look at the basics of using WebSockets. Okay, so WebSockets allows for two-way event-driven communication between a web browser and a WebSocket server. Okay, so this makes it perfect for real-time applications, so things like chat applications, multiplayer games, or even displaying live data. Okay, so after watching this tutorial, you should be able to create your own simple WebSockets application. So I want to jump right into actually using WebSockets and of course sending data between this page and our server side. Okay, so let's go inside uh, the text editor. As we can see, I've got this index.html file, so of course this one refers to this page right here, and we're going to be sending information from this page to our server side. So let's firstly just create a new WebSocket server. Okay, so we're going to be using Node.js as our server side technology, but you can use many different languages and technologies, um, but of course Node.js is probably one of the more popular ones. Okay, so let's go inside here, make a new directory called server. And of course, you want to make sure you have npm or node.js installed. So we're going to be going inside the terminal for this directory, so forward slash server. And we're going to be creating a new node.js project by saying npm uh, init dash y. Okay, so now we can install uh, one of the more popular Node.js WebSocket servers. It's called WS. So I can say right here, npm i, then of course, WS. Um, so now that's installed, we can then make a new index.js inside this directory. Okay, and of course right here, we're going to be writing up our WebSocket server. So let's first include that module. We can say const WebSocket equal to require, then pass through here ws. And now we can easily create our server by saying const wss, short for WebSocket server, equal to a new WebSocket.server, then pass through here a list of options. So I'm just going to be specifying one option here, and that is going to be the port which the server runs on. So I can say here port then specify something like 8082. Okay, so now um, this line of code is of course going to actually start up our WebSocket server. So uh, let's listen for an event where a new client has connected to our server. We can achieve this by saying wss.on then pass through here connection. So of course, you can pass through many different event types here. We're going to be passing through connection. And of course, it's going to fire off whenever a new client has connected. So basically, when I refresh this page, we expect this function uh, right here. So I can just say right here, ws. So this function right here, this callback function for this event is going to run when I refresh this page. Now, WS refers to a single connection to the server side. If you have multiple different tabs open here or you have multiple different users connecting at once, then you're going to have many of these connection events firing off and many different WS objects. Okay, so WS refers to a single connection, whereas WSS refers to the actual server. So now we can say console.log, then pass through here new client connected, for example. Okay, so now once this is done, like I said earlier, if I refresh this page, we expect in the console new client connected. We can also listen for the close event for this particular uh, client. So for example, we can say ws.on, then pass through here close. Then inside here, we can simply just say, um, you know, console.log client has disconnected. Okay, so as we can see, we are actually putting this on the single WebSocket connection and of course not on the WebSocket server. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So now, 
This is all we're going to be putting just for now. So 11 lines of code gives you a very basic WebSocket server. Let's now just uh, go inside here and say node index.js to of course uh, start our server just like that. I'm now going to just uh, go inside uh, this tab for the HTML file. I'll just close this for now but it is still running in the background and now inside the HTML we can connect to our server. So let's say in the JavaScript uh, const ws is equal to a new instance of WebSocket just like that. Inside here you pass through the URL for your WebSocket server. In this case we're going to be passing through ws colon forward slash forward slash localhost at port 8082. Okay, so I do want to say first off for development purposes where you're, you know while you're experimenting locally ws is perfectly fine but for production, you want to make sure you use WSS, which is the secure form of WebSockets. Okay, but of course, WS is fine for local development. So now, uh, this line of code, when executed, is going to connect to our WebSocket server right here. Okay, so we're going to be saying in a similar fashion down here, we can say ws.addEventListener. We're going to be listening for the open event and this one right here is going to fire off whenever we are connected to our server side. So we can say here for example, uh, let's just say console.log, we are connected. Okay, so now we have the server running. I'm just going to maximize the terminal window right here, then refresh the browser. As we can see, we get right here we are connected. So of course we are connected to the server. Okay, so now back inside the terminal we can see right here we get new client connected on the server side. So currently everything is working to plan. Okay, of course this event has fired off. Okay, we are connected and of course right here we are also listening for the close event. So if I was to go back inside the browser then refresh then go back inside here, we can see in the terminal we get client has disconnected because when I refresh the page it closes the connection to the server and then of course it reconnects right after on the refresh. Okay, so now let's just go back inside the browser and inspect the network tab of the developer tools. Inside here we can see right down here when filtering by WS we can actually see not only our messages when we actually send some, but also inside the headers, we can see the WebSocket handshake uh, be taken place. So initially, when establishing a connection to the server side, it sends through an HTTP request, but then that gets upgraded to a WebSocket connection. As we can see right here, in the request headers, uh, the browser has said, I want to upgrade, so connection upgrade, it has said upgrade WebSocket. It is trying to upgrade the HTTP request to our WebSocket protocol. Okay, then the server has said yes, I can do that. So in the response headers, it says, okay, connection upgrade, upgrade WebSocket, and now the handshake is complete. So now we can officially start sending data between the client and the server. Okay, so let's now send a few messages, of course, between the two. So, Let's actually send some messages or send a message from the web browser to the server side first. So, uh, inside here, um, let's, just, uh, let's just stop the server, then go back inside the index.js and we're going to be specifying uh, one more event listener for the server side. So, we're going to be saying ws.on once again. This time, uh, the event is going to be message. Okay? Then inside here, we can of course run this uh, run this listener. So I can say right here, basically just data. Now data refers to the actual uh, data which the client side has sent to the server. Okay, so when the server side gets a message from this WebSocket connection, the data is inside here. So I can say for example, console.log, something like client has sent us then pass through here 
the actual data. Okay, so now let's save this and then restart the server by saying once again node index.js. Let's go uh, back inside the index HTML and uh, once we have actually opened up the connection, we are now safe to start sending data. So let's say here ws.send then pass through here for example, hey, how's it going? Just like that. So now it's going to send this message. The server side is going to retrieve it through this function right here and of course log it to the console. So now let's save this. Uh, let's just open up the terminal once again. Okay, let's go back in the browser, refresh and right here. You can see of course we get once again, we are connected but also inside the network tab, we can see also uh, if I click on this once again, we get a message right here, data, hey, how's it going? And that just tells you that we've actually sent that message to the server. Back inside the terminal, we can see right here we get client has sent us, hey, how's it going? That's working perfectly fine. So now let's send data from the server back to the client. So let's just uh, once again stop this server. Then go back inside here and in the on listener, we're going to also just say ws.send this time on the server side. We can pass through here data dot to uppercase. So we're going to simply transform the string into uppercase and send it back to the client. Okay, let's go back inside the index HTML now and actually, you know, retrieve that message. So it's going to be done in a very similar fashion. So we can say right here, ws.addEventListener, pass through here message. Then here, we're going to have a message event object. So we can say right here, simply just console.log for now. Okay. We can then start the server once again, make it full screen, refresh the browser. In the console tab, we can see right here, we get message event. Okay, from the server side and of course right here inside the data property, we get our uppercase string. Okay, so uh, to access that property, of course, you can simply just say, you know, um, e.data, something like that. But you may also want to consider uh, using object destructuring. For example, we can say something like this, data, okay then now data is going to refer to the data property on that object. So now uh, if I save this and refresh once again, we can see we get, hey, how's it going in the console? Now, um, that's basically how it works. A very simple example, sending strings back and forth. Okay, now I want to, I want to mention um, also that if I was to just duplicate this tab here, and refresh, we can see that we get, of course, many different messages uh, in the terminal. So if I, or we get right here, we get one, two, three. So if I do it again, okay, try again, um, we now get four. So like I said, uh, essentially, uh, this function right here, this, this uh, on connection is going to run for every single individual connection. Just keep that in mind. But um, that is uh, the basics of using WebSockets. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.